morning we only had the car until about noon based on like how the hours for the rental worked out and stuff. So we got up kind of early and got out the door about eight o'clock to just go for a drive. And the main objective of the drive today, and this is gonna sound crazy, is to find wallabies. And that sounds insane because we're in the wrong side of the planet for wallabies, but apparently like at some point somebody brought some wallabies up here, like maybe to put in captivity and they got loose. And now there's wallabies like wild on the island. Um, so we've come to the area that is <laughs> labeled on our map as the wallaby hotspot. And I don't think even if we have a wallaby directly in front of us, we're going to see it until it's too late because it is really, really, really thick with fog up on the hill. And I keep seeing sheep every once in a while and they're like, it's like all of a sudden, boom, sheep. And you're like, oh, I hope that sheep doesn't end up in front of the car because I don't know if I have time to stop. So we're going to look for wallabies, but I think it's probably not going to work out. <laughs> Still no wallabies, but we saw some sheep. And uh, the soupiness is starting to break up a little bit, so maybe we'll get lucky. But I realized that we hadn't really told anybody what we named the car, because we didn't really name the car. And um, Katie just mentioned, I didn't, we didn't really name the car. And I've been just kind of in my head calling it Note, which is like the lame Japanese pronunciation of the car, Note. But uh, it's a Japanese car, so I figured it makes sense, right? Yeah. Note-san. <laughs> We drove around the northern part of the island where the wallaby hotspot was located. And there's a lot of flat fields and stuff up there, but there's also these really high mounds of dirt that are running along the sides of the road. So it's hard to see into the fields where the wallabies apparently would be. So we drove around for a while and we saw some pretty things here and there and a lot of sheep and a lot of grass walls and no wallabies. But we're on our way back down to the city Douglas that we're staying in now. And we took a quick detour up a little road that is just this teeny tiny little barely one lane road that puts you out on the edge of the ocean. And yet again, just found something that looks incredible, which the island is in no shortage of. We found ourselves in Laxey, which is a city we'll probably be coming to later on. But uh, we pulled over for just a moment and I read the sign behind me. I don't think Laxey's got much going on considering that they've got the Sunday meat raffle as like a big, a big thing that's going on at this pub. That could be one of those endangered sheep, dude. Yeah, we're, they're raffling off the lock tan. Can we eat a, <laughs> can we eat a wallaby? If we can catch one, <laughs> but you got to see one with these hedges, you're not seeing them. <laughs> when you're on an island, seafood is a very big thing, and we don't typically eat seafood very often. So we came to a restaurant that is actually offering seafood and other things so that Eric can be pleased and I can be pleased. The place is called Little Fish Cafe. Um, it's a pretty adorable name for a shop. And it's right on the harbor here in Douglas. So tons of boats outside, lots of seafood inside. And I got the Queenie Po' Boy. Queenies are short for scallops, the queen scallops that they have here. And they're actually looking more like tater tots. Give me the tots! I assume these are deep fried. That's how it looks. They are very soft. I didn't expect them to be soft to me. Um, the scallops have kind of a crumbly texture to them. You know nothing about what I'm talking about right now. Scallops are nasty, y'all. <laughs> it, it's got a good fishiness to it, so you probably won't even try it, but I would definitely say that they're good. And my po' boy is just filled with them. How is the sauce? The sauce is spicy. Really? Yeah. I'm taking it off the bun. <laughs> Just nice and spicy. Yeah. Turns out there's a nice green sauce on the inside that complements the spicy sauce on the outside very, very well. It's like a guacamole. It doesn't, I did not expect that at all. Like seafood and guacamole don't go together for me. But then again, I'm sure there's a good bit of Mexican cuisine that I haven't visited that just puts guacamole on everything. So it probably goes with everything. What's there to do in Douglas? I'm not quite sure. I guess 
We, could, we went to the Manx Museum. We went to the Manx Museum, we check out, and that's free actually, and it gives you like a cool history of the uh, the island and, the, and everything, and that was, that was a good starting point, I think, on a day when we first got here. I guess we haven't truly explained that this, the, the island kind of dies tourism-wise mm. outside of the summer. Yeah. So there's, there are tons of things. Like, there, there would be 20 things on my list of things to do if it were summer. But I keep seeing doesn't open till March, doesn't open till March. It's February 20th. And a big part of that, is the stuff that closes, is the island is famous for transportation and stuff. And mm -hmm. they have all these trains and trams and, like, uh, trains that are pulled by horses and stuff. Yeah. That all happen during the summertime. And the one thing that is bumming me out that we missed is you can actually sign up for a class and they let you drive a train. Drive a train. <laughs> March. And I looked into that, but it doesn't happen until March. So we're going to miss it this time. But I think that's just a reason maybe to come back at some point and see. It's, it's definitely a reason a to come train. back. I want to see you drive a train, y'all. Yeah. It's definitely a reason to come back. And also the, the, the good thing about that is that you go and find other things. Other yeah. things that other people wouldn't have found. Yeah. I'm sure there's a video about the horses. I'm sure there's a video about driving that train somewhere, maybe. Um, but, you know, we're going to find things that people might not think that are video worthy, but they're still awesome. Yeah. And we're going to make and a video out of all of this awesome There's things. There's plenty of awesome stuff going on here. Yeah. So like Katie said, uh, we're in Douglas. And Douglas is the capital of the Isle of Man. And the biggest concentration of people live here, but it's still a pretty small little quaint town. Yeah. It just runs along this beautiful little coast and they have like one street that you can walk down and it has actually like quite a bit of shopping on it and international level shopping. Like it's not just little local shops. Like like I was, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, surprised yeah. to see that there's like real like shop shops. Shop shops. Yeah. Shop shops. They got a boots, y'all. They got a boots. Good job. They also got a pound land, but they call it deals. Yeah, yeah. Pound land is their dollar store essentially here. It's called pound land. Yeah. And here they've changed the name to deals. So receipt still says pound land. It does. <laughs> I think the dude that worked there's name tag said pound land too. It's like pound land Jacob. Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> okay, enough making fun of their dollar store. Um, <laughs> that was a yeah. very funny name. So we are actually staying, we are staying in Douglas. And again, we haven't found a whole lot of like, like wow, super remarkable stuff. But we're gonna go down, we're gonna wander around today, and yeah. I don't know, maybe we'll just find some place to hang out and like work on stuff with our computers. That's kind of what the day is signed up for. And in all honesty, like what I've found is just looking at the city is one of the, the city and the entire country uh, is one of the best things. Yeah, when we got off the, 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 the boat, like the first thing I said is it looks like San Francisco here. Mm. And it's just because the way the buildings look and stuff. I mean, I assume maybe San Francisco looks like here, maybe it's the opposite way around. But having been to San Francisco first, I was like, this looks super, super familiar. And it sits on the ocean and stuff. And it's kind of got that windy like sea vibe and it's a little bit cold. Yep. Like San Francisco can be a little bit windy and cold sometimes. It's just a lot of the vibes are strangely the same. All Very the, strange. We're up on a hill right now. Like everything about it yeah. is really, really like this hints back to San Francisco, which is not something you expect. Like, not you at all. Don't expect to find that on the other side I of the world. I didn't expect like a full house remix over here. <laughs> <laughs> Did we want to show off? Check out this dude. We, we this where we're standing is this amazing overlook, right? But there's also a statue, and this is Steve Hislop. And the reason he has a statue here is the same reason that you see a lot of statues and this helps like drive in a little bit of how important the race is to the culture of the island and this guy won the tt 11 times he's not from here he's scottish i believe yeah and he actually ended up dying in a helicopter accident so he didn't die during the tt or anything but he won it so many times that they were like homeboy needs a statue yeah so they've got Viking statues and other things like that. The TT is just as big as that. The TT is just as big Viking as history. Level. Vi <laughs> yes, it's just, it's, it is the, it's the modern history of this place. And it's mm. really cool that it's fast and zooming and dangerous and interesting and really current, really something. It's, yeah. That doesn't it's, bore children. Uh, yeah, a lot of times you have <laughs> you have culture about things and it's very disconnected, it's very old. But this is something that's like happening now and it's really cool to see something like that in a place that feels a bit remote and like it doesn't feel like it would have something so exciting and new. Yeah. But it does. Windy. <laughs> T-shirts I want are never in my size.
One of the very first things you see when you arrive on Isle of Man is this other little tiny island in the bay with a little castle or tower on it. And it looks really inaccessible, so it makes me really want to go there. <laughs> so we looked it up and apparently during low tide, you can walk out there to it. Like the tide goes down far enough to like, create like a footbridge or whatever. But then it's that sometimes people get stranded because the tide comes back super fast and they don't realize like, you know, oh, I'm gonna get, you know, stuck. So then they end up stuck. So I'm not sure I wanna get stuck out there in the winter, but I think that if I see the tide low enough to walk out there, I might do it. All right, British Isles. This is something that we first saw when we were in England and we're seeing it here in uh, Isle of Man as well. This is not a good system. <laughs> like. This, you see this, this is hot. <laughs> and this one says cold. But do you see the grand distance between the two? When you turn this one on, it's super, super hot. And when you turn this one on, it's super, super cold. But those are two temperatures that I never want. <laughs> I want warm <laughs> because they're so far apart. Like how in the hell am I supposed to <laughs> How am I supposed to do this? What's the logic between this? Why isn't it just one pipe? Why are there two? <laughs> This morning we have hopped on the bus and I was surprised to see that it's actually a double-decker bus like what we rode around in London. So you get this really, really nice view of the amazing scenery on the island and you mm. can see the ocean sometimes. And it's just double-decker buses are really awesome is really what it comes yeah. down to. And we've come up to a little place called Laxey which is, I don't know, maybe it was 20 minutes or less on the bus. Yeah, it was 20. For some reason, I got on there expecting 45, and then when we had to get off, I was like, oh, crap, get off the bus! <laughs> so we popped up to Laxey, and there's a couple of things here that um, are of note. One of them we'll show you in a couple minutes, but the first thing we came across that I didn't even know about until we got here is that apparently they used to do a lot of mining in this area. And along this little river, I guess, is where they would do the mining, and behind us, is what is called a gunpowder room and it's where they stored all the gunpowder for the mining back in the day and of note there's no roof on it and they've converted it into a bathroom now and you can see there's still no roof on it and the reason that there is no roof on it is because they were worried that if there was an explosion in the gunpowder room they wanted it, all the energy to go up instead of outwards. So if there was nothing containing the top, then the explosion would go up and it wouldn't blow up all the people around it, which I guess is a fairly good idea and kind of works as well for a bathroom. Yeah, yeah, because I was just in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I was out here and I'm still alive. <laughs> I didn't see any birds falling down in there though. There's a couple of dead ones in there already. <laughs> We mentioned this previously, but one of the things we're a bit bummed about being here off season is the train network is not operating. And it's a really incredible train network considering the number of people that live on the island, which is relatively low, because they've got all these little trains that go to all these little nooks and crannies of the island. And this is one of those places where it comes to the mines area, which is essentially a tourist area. Maybe it was originally built back in the day for actually hauling things out of the mines, which would make sense. And I really wish we could see it because I'm really intrigued at how narrow the gauge on the tracks is. Um, let me see if I can make that make sense. So I'm going to stand up and I'm going to put this down and you can see like how narrow it is. My feet barely fit between the tracks. And I just can't imagine like what the car that rolls along this looks like. It must be really, really narrow. And I don't know, maybe you sit two across or something and that's it. I assume it was like moving stuff like back in the day for mining. So maybe it was like, you know, like a, like a Donkey Kong minecart ride type thing. Maybe that's what it used to be like. I don't know. I'm really intrigued. It makes me want to come back and just ride around this island on their little trains. Lexi has a huge unseen mine system beneath it that actually goes all the way into the earth further than the highest point of the entire island, Mount Sneffel. So there's a lot going on underneath the ground that we can't even see. But the only thing that we can see is kind of this really creepy mine entrance. There's got to be some really terrible stuff in there. Do you want me to talk about the ponies now that I've forgotten to talk about the ponies? Is that why we're, we're doing this video right here? No, I was going to bring up Mount Sneefel. The name is Sneef... Sneefel? Sneefel? 
I've been saying it to people and nobody looked at me strange. It does sound like a Smurfs mountain or something like that. I didn't see any Smurfs, but there were a lot of weird rocks on the ground. It could have just been in Smurf graveyard. And you mentioned ponies now, and everybody's now wondering, what the hell are you talking about? Oh, with the ponies, yeah. <laughs> That's not why I turned the camera on. It was we're, we're talking about We gotta steeple. walk that way. Oh, okay, my so, bad. So, the ponies used to help the mine. They used to have carts that would go through, and they strapped some ponies to the front of the carts. And, and like, the, took them down in the hole? They didn't take them down in the hole. Like, there's essentially a level that goes all the way across the top. Yeah. That people, when they extracted the ore and things like that, they would put it into, um... The little wagons that the horses the do the do the pull. Donkey Kong carts. Yes, they put in little Donkey Kong cor uh, uh, carts that were strapped to ponies. Okay. It's, this is the cutest video game I've ever heard of. <laughs> but in real actuality, it's guys that are dying in mines to bring out little pebbles that are then going into a rickety old cart that is strapped to a pony that's probably dying of some sort of weird <laughs> mining situation. But ponies shouldn't be miners. <laughs> Oh, this is lovely. Nobody said anything about like a little Russian like waterfall going on here. How do you know it's Russian? I don't know it's Russian, <laughs> but it's it's rapid. <laughs> they, they didn't tell us about the rapids. <laughs> it's a big wheel. <laughs> Katie had mentioned that the mines are all full of water now. And you might wonder like, well, if they were full of water, like how did the ponies not drown? And the way that the ponies didn't drown is that they had this gigantic water wheel that acts as a pump to pull the, to pull all the water out of the mine. And it's not operating now because they're not mining it anymore. Mm. But it is shockingly big and rather iconic looking. Yeah. They've maintained it pretty well and everything. It hasn't just like fallen into disuse. They've kept it painted and stuff because it's kind of a bit of a tourist attraction just because of how ridiculously big it is. It, it feels like those old houses in America that have like the little um, drapes that are drawn like this and they look real American. And I know that we're not in America. I'm well aware of that, but they look like those old like traditional little houses that have little drapes. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. It reminds me more of like boats on like the Mississippi River. Oh yeah, yeah, Like yeah. it's got that kind of yep. like architectural look and stuff. Some steam needs to be happening right now. <laughs> but apparently it, when it operated, it was extremely powerful and they never even actually took it all the way up to like its maximum potential of power. But I, to be able to pull all that water and stuff out of those mines, it's like pretty impressive. Yeah, for and, it's, age it, and it's amazing that it's there to pump out the water and it, it, it's using water. It's using the water to pump it's out like the water. It's like a perpetual That's motion a, machine. Yeah, it's a perpetual <laughs> motion machine and that, that blew my mind a little bit. I didn't expect to see this really, really, really long path that they've built that is like kind of like a Roman aqueduct system. And the purpose of it is, I guess they run the water along that as well. I don't know, I don't quite understand how the water gets up to go down because it does go in the top of the wheel and then fall down. It doesn't just run along like a base or something. So somehow they're pumping, yeah, it's like a perpetual motion machine. It's what a is perpetual this, magic? Motion machine. They put water up to make it go down to make it pull more water out of yeah. a ground. How did the water yeah. go up in the first place? <laughs> I think maybe they, they had to start it with just some buckets. <laughs> it's like siphoning a gas tank or something. Yep, exactly. <laughs> From up a little bit higher, you can see that that long aqueduct looking system actually doesn't carry water, but it has a gigantic piston system that runs out the side of it. That I guess is like the counterbalance or whatever for the wheel to move the other piston to pull the water out of the ground. We have come down to the southern part of the Isle of Man. And the reason we've come here is because there is a wonderful little town called Castle Town, which just draws you in by the name alone. And it actually has a real castle on it. In it? On it? We're on an in island. It. We're in a castle, a castle town. in Castle Town. <laughs> but yeah. we're not inside the castle. The castle is actually behind us right now. And the reason that there's a castle here is because historically this was the uh, capital of the Isle of Man, like back in the day. And it has now been moved, I believe, up to Douglas. That's the capital now. Mm. And that's where we're staying, up in Douglas. And the reason we chose Douglas is because it is central to the island. It sits in the middle, basically. So it seemed you like... You can get to all sides yeah, very quickly and easily. Yeah, it seemed like it made sense. But having been to Castletown um, a few days ago, I realized that this might have been the cooler place to stay just because of the vibe that it has. And it just looks very picturesque. 
and it's quaint and it's got this amazing little castle and it sits right on the ocean and stuff. There's a lot of things that it just really has going for it. And another thing that it has going for it is, is what I would really like. And that is this pamphlet that Eric brought home yesterday <laughs> from this lovely little castle town. Um, castle town apparently has a, a collection of fairies that live here. And I think you have to step back just a little bit and understand one of the like traditions of the Manx people, which is when you drive over a certain area called the Fairy Bridge, you always say hello to the fairies because you don't want, I, I guess it maybe it brings- You don't want to anger the fairies. You don't want to anger the fairies apparently. And uh, even when you're riding on the bus like we took the bus from Laxey down to here and when you're riding across the bridge the, the bus has an announcement where it says hello fairies hello fairies like it's an automated thing every time it drives past seriously the bus it says greets it. the fairies okay so yeah, i think it's the throw like so you don't have bad luck or something like yeah, that like yeah. you know and it's got to be something about that and then so you come down to castle town and they have this amazing little booklet where you can go and find all the fairies homes so we're gonna find the fairies homes today yeah so it's a bit like a geocache yeah, a but geocache there's no that digital you to don't it. have to be like a shady person about it. Yeah, because yeah. everybody, everybody down here knows that this little game is happening. Yeah. And uh, actually what it is, it's going to be like little doors of the fairies' houses that we're yeah, going to go find. Yeah, they're like little clay doors. One of the things says that one of the fairies goes into a clay workshop and makes all of these different doors for the fairies that live here. And sometimes when they go into the shop, they, they come upon a whole new door that's been built that night and they have to go and put it out. <laughs> um, so there could be new fairies that are not included in this if more doors have been made but we can only find the fairies that are in here i think new fairies don't be here because i'm not ready for you <laughs> we just started looking at the flyer and we're near a fairy i can feel it i know it i also see it on the map but it's a very vague map it's just a star that could really be here or there I, uh, we gotta find them there's a couple around here there are three in this area <laughs> So my bet is that we need to look low. Look low, all right. Because fairies are little, right? Yeah. But they can fly. They can fly. <laughs> nice cock. <laughs> I found a fairy door, dude. What? Yeah, come here. You want to show you? <gasps> there he is. Wow. He lives in the backyard. It really just looks like Wilson's fence. <laughs> This one has a flower rock on a cat. You gonna mark them off? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta complete everything <laughs> appropriately. <laughs> Found some wall art here. It's a shark. But what's weird about it, if you come with me, is it's a shark with like some like construction, you know, like somebody got killed tape. And then you come down a little further and then it's got like you know uh like one of those flyers like at a used car lot <laughs> oh, this says party to me oh this says party to you yeah, like, this is used car lot stuff banner. to me and then at the very end the moon <laughs> it's got a ball you leave his ball alone <laughs> what is this even <laughs> This must be one of those Everest doors we've been hearing about with the with the five lock system and stuff like that. This ferry is high security. <laughs> so the way I found out about this little ferry scavenger hunt is that I came down here yesterday by myself just to walk around the town and see what was going on while Katie was doing some work back at the place that we're staying at. And I walked out to the end of this pier where this little lighthouse is. And I was looking at the lighthouse just like do to do to do. And I noticed this little door. And I was like, what the hell? So I was taking a picture of it because it's kind of strange, right? And a couple came up and they were a local couple. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> and so they explained like, oh, we've got this little game and like you can play to find all the fairy doors all around town and stuff. I explained where I would go to find the pamphlet and stuff. So just by complete chance that I happened to find one of the doors is what has brought us back here today into the windiest place in the world to see if we can hunt down the rest. It's really out here? 
really campy out here. That ferry did not live down in the dangerous area, but we traversed the dangerous area nonetheless to find the ferry. They live on land. Not, not water goers, I don't think. The people in this area seem pretty stand up, but they have a meth church. Yo, I don't know if I'm sold on the Kowloon Chinese and chip shop. <laughs> Where we lived in Virginia, there was a place nearby called Bowling Green. It was the name of the town. And it never occurred to me that a bowling green was like a place where you did bowling on a green. But apparently it is. On our search for ferries, we've come across the local bowling green. And it is a big flat grass field that they keep fairly well maintained. And you play a game on it where you have like, oh, it's not a bowling ball like what you'd think like if you're an American, it's a smaller ball. And you, I guess, based on observation, put down a white colored ball at one end of the green and then everybody rolls the ball and whoever gets their ball closest to the white ball is the person who wins. And I get the impression that you can take and actually use your ball to hit somebody else's ball out of the way so you can like be kind of aggressive about the way you play if you want to, if you want, if you want to be that guy. But I, I don't know, it was really fun to just kind of stumble across this and it was just because we did this little game looking for little fairy doors. And some people might be like, I want to find all the fairy doors. And I mean, that is kind of fun. It's fun to check that box, but it's also fun to see where it takes you. So I'm really happy that they had a game like this in this little town because you get to explore little nooks and crannies that like otherwise, why would have I ever walked over here? So yeah, good on you, Castletown. We're looking for our last couple of ferry doors. We found almost all of them in the whole town and it's brought us over to a little park that is behind a cute little train station that they have that because of the season is not operating. But regardless, the park is really cool. And I don't know if you can notice I'm going up and down. It's because I'm walking along a bicycle path that they've built that's like for like, you know, kids like riding a little bit off-road style or whatever. And I am extremely jealous that I don't have a bike right now because this looks incredibly fun. One more ferry. Just one? Yeah. I think we'll find it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think so. There's like, how many, there's around 30 of them. Yeah, around and 30. There was one so far. I mean, we have not found the last one, but there's only one that we haven't found. And I suspect it was because there's construction going on. Yeah, there is a good bit of construction, which I was shocked to see that even in some construction areas, we were still able to find mm -hmm. some fairy doors. They still doors made it accessible. And yeah, they made it so that you could see them. The one we couldn't find didn't make sense. It was like in a parking lot with construction. It was just too many things. So, you know, sometimes you just go, that fairy, I don't need to go to their house. <laughs> I found it. You found it already? Yeah, already. What? Oh, hey, look at that. The fairy lives in the tree. And there's only been a couple that haven't been at ground level. Yeah, this is my favorite. Of all? Yeah, because it's on the tree. It looks really cool. <laughs> it's not bad. And it looks like somebody's going to open it, but nobody's going to open it. Knock. They're not home. Can I get you to hold the fairy booklet? Doing this. We really like Top Gear, and I think I mainly like it because of the comedy. I'm not super into cars. So when uh, Clarkson takes out the Reliant, Reliant, Reliant? This doesn't sound right. Reliant Robin, I think. Reliant Robin. Yeah. yeah, and just tips it over a whole bunch of times. It is comedic gold and we found one which I did not think we'd be finding one of these and I thought it was like just gonna be a relic somebody's using this for deliveries of a delicacy known as Manx fish pickles <laughs> and then on top of that say like you can't come and like pick it up yourself you could also post a fish if you wanted to fish pickles in the mail 
Have you noticed the sign behind you? Yeah, kippers. Read the rest of it. By boat. <laughs> okay, people, people will not get up off the couch for fish because they have realized we are gonna have to mail all these fish to people if we want them to take them. Down in the town of Peel, there is a little castle that sits on an island that's just a little small bridge walk away from the mainland of the island. And there's a beach that sits along the, the castle, like a little cove. And I've never in my life seen so many seashells. The ground is just completely covered in them. It's kind of crazy. You feel like you're just stepping on art when you walk along this beach. Everything is cracking under your feet. It feels kind of, I feel a little guilty to be honest. <laughs> Pretty magnificent. Does it seem closed? Yeah, it's definitely closed. Got a nice big lock here. Nobody's guarding the castle though, so it's a little disappointing. <laughs> I expected arrows and some sort of battle to take place and so just come up and knock on the door. Maybe Again, this is our castle now. No one's home. <laughs> the fairies aren't home. Royalty is not home. Come on people, answer the door. a different world. We're hiding behind a castle. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> behind behind Peel Castle, the wind has sort of calmed down a little bit. Which no, the is... wind hasn't calmed down. The castle is taking the brunt of the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're on the, the, the downwind side of the castle, I guess, yeah. where the, the wall is keeping us a little bit warm. And um, the castle is closed, which is not a surprise because off season, but we still, walking around the corner, came across this ridiculous view mm. of another island, I guess, that is sort of uh, off the coast of this little area. And a little dog just showed up. Yeah. <laughs> you can go by see him. Yep, there he goes. <laughs> and all of these birds that are flying around and stuff, and you can hear them like squawking and whatnot. There's just this huge group of them sitting on the island, this white cloud. Just like flying around and sitting there. It's just like really majestic, really beautiful. And sometimes they get fish. Yeah, they do. Katie was like, where do they get those fish? <laughs> the ocean. <laughs> ocean. <laughs> you can't see that wind. <laughs> Walking through the quaint little village of Peel is kind of like going back in time in a way because it doesn't seem like there's any super centers that have come here like a Walmart or a Tesco or something. So it's still like, when you go to a shop it's like you have one little shop that specializes in something and the people that work there own it and then across the street there's another one so you'll have like a butcher shop and a bakery and a place to buy books and a grocery store and a hardware store and everything is just like separated and it's actually quite nice to see this little community thriving like this because things still seem like they're alive and I do dread if they ever do decide that a Tesco needs to happen somewhere around here because I think it'll probably just wipe out the whole town so hopefully they can hold on to this fuel for at least a little while. Hi. Look at that. <laughs> it doesn't have a tail. This is weird. This island is famous for Manx cats, which are cats with a no tail. Sometimes they have like a little nub and stuff. And this one been... has no tail. I can see it's a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've been looking for one for the entire time we've been here for like two weeks. And this is the first one we've seen. And I've been like sneaking up on cats like, oh, is it going to be one? Because I wanted to like, you know, get a video of it and interact with it a little bit. But they always just kind of like get skittish and run off. And like we were walking up to this one like, oh, here maybe it is. So I started the recording and everything. And then he came over and he's beeline for me. And he's like, oh, we're going to be friends. So this is my first like official like Island of Man Manx cat. 
It's pretty fun. I love kitties, man. Other people's kitties are great. I don't want a kitty of my own, but this one's amazing. Nice. Dang it! Oh, it's a really nice one, though. It's really well painted and, yeah. <laughs> Peel is known for seafood. I'm surprised that all cities here aren't just known for seafood because all the major cities are coastal. But Peel is known for its seafood, and one of the major things that it's known for is kippers. Which to some, like Eric, might look like the most devastating thing that ever happened to a plate, and he's not very much happy with the situation that's happening here. Smell-o-vision, it smells disgusting to him. It smells verging on not good fishy to me, but I'm starting to grow on the smell. Um, kippers are herring that have been caught, they've been split down the middle, and they have then been smoked on wood chips. And that's a peel specialty. I, I don't know if any other place in the world is making kippers other than peel, but I'm gonna find out about this meat. She said there are going to be little bones along the way. I'm just going to eat that bone. That's a really good flavor. Wow. Yeah, for the, the smell, I totally get what you, you feel, yeah. but that taste is all right. The smell is atrocious, dude. It's worse than the Swedish fish. That soul strumming or whatever. It's not. It's good. In the, the, the land famous for seafood, I got a corned beef sandwich. <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking about just kind of putting it like, on my nose and just hanging it there while I eat the other half. <laughs> because fish is killing me, y'all. Uh, I'm gonna take this turn so fast, it's gonna be dangerous. We're up on the northern part of the island and we've walked out of a little town called Ramsey and we're walking along the actual TT course <laughs> and we realized we're going to get to walk up along one of the most like crazy turns on the entire course called the hairpin mm -hmm. and it's literally like 180 degrees I guess like that you turn. The 360, no, no 180. Three, one, yeah. 360. <laughs> that would be yeah. a hell of a corner. Yeah. But uh, it's, it looks really, really iconic and like really does look like a hairpin. Yeah. And I can see that like this would be a pretty dangerous part of a race course. There have been some bikes out today and I was hoping to see at least maybe one go around this corner, but I don't <laughs> think it's going to happen. I don't think our timing is going to be that lucky. Even when we drove it in the car, it's a little bit like, whoa, this is really, Slow really. Slow down. Because it's, it's, it's on a hill and then it's also the super sharp corner and everything. And then there's a little f waterfall right next to the road, so you kind of want to be looking over there, but you should be looking <laughs> at the road. It's dangerous. Imagine a little ice. Ooh. I don't want to. <laughs> Why did we add elements of difficulty to this? <laughs> Just off the hairpin turn, we've decided to walk up in the woods as the sun is going down, because we're not bright. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? I don't know. We're going up a hill. I mean, as long as you go back down, you can't get that lost. <laughs> this is a pretty steep incline, dude. Yeah. You seen the lean this tree's got going on? Yeah. <laughs> I have that same lean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Here, like, this is what it feels like. <laughs> I think my dad still thinks we're in Sweden. Are you serious? Yeah, he's telling me that the uh, US is versus Sweden right now in the curl in a curling event. Those Swedes are gonna win. Seriously, are they playing against Alaskans? Because maybe if they're playing against Alaskans. But I was in Sweden recently. It's really cold and it's good for curling, so I think they're gonna win. <sighs> The Olympics are on right now. <laughs>
The reason we were hiking through the woods is because Katie saw the name of a tower that looked like a place that she would want to check out and we could see it from down in the town and we looked it up on Google and it was like it'll be about 20 minutes it was really probably closer to an hour but we've made it up to the top of the hill and this is Albert's tower y'all and the thing that is a little bit of a bummer you can't go inside however from up here on Albert's tower you got a pretty good view of the ocean and the city like along the coast. Nobody's home in Isle of Man till March. We have a new question that we like to ask locals. And we asked a local that we met yesterday who happened to be a 16 year old boy that we met on a bus. And the question is, if you left here and came back after six months, what is the first thing you would go try to find to eat? Like what? item would you be missing that's like, like you can only get here and you're just dying to have it when you come back and he immediately said that it was the chips cheese and gravy which is apparently the national dish of isle of man and we have come to the location that he mentioned we should try and it is called the terrace chippy and chippy is kind of a generic term for restaurants that serve deep fried food. <laughs> I would call it junk food borderline kind of, like it's you are not gonna get a healthy meal here. So this is the type of place you would come to get like fish and chips or a jacket potato or what they call chips, cheese, and gravy. So my chips, cheese, and gravy has arrived and it is huge. Do you keep in mind my hand is really big and just look how much food is here and by chips, they don't mean Doritos. By chips, of course, they mean french fries. And they have covered it in gravy and Manx cheese. I gotta be real with you, this doesn't look very good to me. But I'm getting it because it was recommended and that it is the national dish. Um, I feel like I'm gonna eat this and it might taste good right away and I'm going to feel terrible in about an hour. <laughs> but let's jump right in. So uh, this looks definitely like a fork situation just because of how wet it is. So we're gonna fork it up and get some cheese, get some chips, get some gravy, and then we go. So the gravy is a lot like um, the kind of gravy you would have on like Thanksgiving or something, like with your turkey and your potatoes and stuff. It's very similar to that. The cheese flavor didn't stand out in that bite. It's not a very strong cheese, but it's definitely cheese. It's probably better than the cheese you would get normally in Japan, but I've definitely had better cheese in Europe, um, and we haven't even been any like real serious cheese places. Well, no, we did go, we had the Wensleydale. The Wensleydale, <laughs> that was amazing. Um, but yeah, it, it's an okay cheese, it's not stand out. The two items complement each other very well, but it's not exciting. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of pepper on here because I think that's necessary. I can kind of see why this would be the answer for somebody where they could be nostalgic for an, a meal like this, just because it is sort of like, um, it's like a homely type of thing, you know? It's like a chicken soup, like that kind of feel. Something that I think that you, if you grew up eating this, you would be nostalgic for this, not having it anymore. Um, The potatoes and chips, I mean, they're chips. They, they aren't excellent, they aren't like horrible. They're just run of the mill potatoes. It's interesting that this is the national dish. <laughs> it's not bad, it's just maybe a little bit on the boring side. I ate quite a bit of it. I have to say, it's really not very good. <laughs> <laughs> the cheese, the more I ate, the cheese became a little bit stronger and was a little bit better. But in general, when you break it all down, this is just gravy and cheese on potatoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, and they're like fried potatoes. It's not, there's not enough here for me to like be like, okay, this is like a, this is, mm, this is perfect. This is just like, it is, whatever you think it tastes like, you're right. Whatever you've got in your mind, you've got it nailed down. 
Um, and we know that in Canada they do a thing called poutine that is similar to this, and we've never had that. So I'm looking forward to maybe in the future trying that, maybe in a small portion, and seeing if I can compare that to this and see how that works out. Um, but I, that said, I'm still really glad that I tried this just because of the way that we were introduced to it through the kid that we met on the bus. And he was just like, he's just instantly like, that's what you eat. Like, that's the thing, that's my thing. And like, I'm glad that I got to have it. And even though I didn't like it, I got to experience it. And I understand a little bit more about something that I otherwise wouldn't have. So even a meal, as long as it's not gonna, you know, make you ill or whatever that you don't enjoy, is still worth having, especially when you're traveling. Um, I just think maybe this would be improved had I been drunk. <laughs> We've come up to Douglas Head, which is on the south side of the city of Douglas, and it kind of uh, wraps around the cove a bit, so you have a really cool view of the beachfront and the promenade of Douglas and just the whole city, and you can see all the way to the other end, which is pretty cool. And something that I found here that is actually a thing we've been noticing quite a bit during our time here on Old Man is these little rocks. And if you come down here with me, I will show you. They're, you'll find them in places just like this. and. It is, it's, they call them Rocks of Isle of Man or Isle of Man Rocks. And people just paint them and then put them places. And then sometimes on the back it'll have a message that explains that post a picture or keep it or hide it in a new place or whatever. So these little rocks are all over the island. There's lots of them. I just found three of them within like, I don't know, 30 feet of each other. We've seen them in all the different areas of this uh, island that we've been on. And it's kind of like, seems like just like a little game that the local people are playing. So maybe I'll take this guy and I'll hide him someplace else and uh, let, the, let it keep moving. Um, some of them are a little bit old too. You guys have seen dates on them. They're like 2013, 2012 and things like that. So it's been going on for quite a while. I think it's kind of fun actually. <laughs> Right next to the ocean, we found this big arrow that points towards Scotland. And that's cool, because that's where we're going next. Yeah! Dorky, yeah. So, well, yeah. yeah, so the game is called Nice Cock. And <laughs> 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 he is winning. <laughs> A big thanks to all our supporters over at Patreon. As you may imagine, these videos can be expensive to produce, and the assistance we get at Patreon is the only way we can keep making them. If you'd like to see more videos like this, consider supporting us at Patreon. Links below. Also be sure to check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Next up, Scotland. <laughs>